I think that the most exciting trend happening at the moment with mountain bikes is the trend towards what used to be considered extreme geometry. Mainstream brands like uh, Specialized with their new Enduro, which in the largest size has a 515 millimeter reach and a 1310 millimeter wheelbase. Those numbers used to be considered extreme. Only brands like Pole and Geometron were going that long. But from a major manufacturer like Specialized to come out with numbers like that, along with other brands like Caliber with a new Sentry and even Giant with their new Rain, that suggests that this geometry is no longer a fringe idea and that those pioneering brands have kind of been proven right to a certain extent because you can get that kind of geometry from loads of different manufacturers now. And for someone tall like me who likes to ride a longer, uh, more stable bike, that's fantastic news for me. In January, I should be taking delivery of the Privateer 161, which is going to be my long-term bike for 2020. And I chose that bike because it's very much at the cutting edge of that trend towards more stable geometry. So I'm really looking forward to riding that in 2020. As gravel bikes get bigger and bigger tires and more suspension and maybe even flat bars, I'm looking forward to a convergence between gravel bikes and mountain bikes in a sort of off-road singularity that ultimately consumes us all. Niner has just released a full suspension gravel bike. The latest cross-country mountain bikes have frames that are lighter than road bikes were a few years ago. At some point, are we just going to have to admit that gravel bikes are just kind of detuned mountain bikes? Are those things one and the same? Let us know what you think in the comments. For 2020, when it comes to mountain bikes, I think the most exciting thing is going to be the proliferation of Shimano group sets in the market. Obviously, they released their XTR, XT and SLX 12-speed group sets over the past year and a half or so. However, as is typical with Shimano, it's taken them a long time to get them to market and this means that few bikes have actually come with the group sets. I think in 2020, production should be sorted out a little bit better and we'll see these group sets on the market a bit more. My experience of XTR 12-speed has been very, very good and I do think that Shimano's 12-speed group sets are arguably some of the best on the market. I personally wouldn't spend my own money on XTR because it is super top end. However, if it was my cash going into a bike, I'd look for one with an SLX 12-speed group set but I would ensure that I upgrade the shifter to an XT model because the feel with a double release click is just that bit better than SLX. My most anticipated product for 2020 is Saracen's new hardtail, the Zenith Elite LSL, which looks to be designed for hardcore trail riding. Saracen claim that this bike is going to be very fast and I must say I'm truly excited to test that fact to see whether these claims are of myth or legend. If you're wondering what LSL stands for, it stands for low, slack and long. Now this is an aluminium frame with 29er wheels and 130mm of travel. You also get a long wheelbase, a slack head angle, so it's a hardtail, but it's a hardtail designed to be a real trail munching machine. This will be my long term review bike for 2020, so I'm going to be putting the bike through its paces and I must say I'm pretty excited to send it. My most anticipated mountain bike product of 2020, well it's an Olympic year and that usually means that bike brands are releasing brand new XC bikes for their top riders to ride in the Olympics. In the last Olympic year, which was 2016, Scott released their new Spark and Scale cross-country models. It's 2020 next year, so I suspect we'll be getting a new Spark and Scale. What they'll look like, who knows, but especially the Spark and the Scale are some of the most popular cross-country bikes in the world. In fact, I've probably never been to any race where you don't see someone on a Spark or a Scale. So keep your eyes peeled for those early XC World Cup rounds in 2020, as I suspect many Scott sponsored riders could be riding some new bikes. Earlier this year, SRAM launched its new AXS kind of ecosystem of wireless electronic group sets for both the road and, for the first time, for mountain bikes. Now, the other big player in the drivetrain market, Shimano, has also previously offered an electronic drivetrain for mountain bikes, but with the launch of XTR last year and XT in 2019, a DI2 version was quite conspicuous by its absence. Now we have no hard and fast details yet of whether or not Shimano is actually developing an electronic drivetrain, but I think it's probably a safe bet. And a few launches we've been on, there's kind of been hints about the fact that the bikes are designed around a DI2 drivetrain. And big brands tend not to make these kind of speculative uh, design decisions unless they know something that we don't. Now again, I have no hard or fast evidence about this, but I really think 
given how Shimano tends to develop things, we're probably going to see DI2 in 2020. In what guise? As in, will it be wireless? Will it be one by only? Will it be kind of this massive ecosystem that can do anything? Remains to be seen, but I think it's probably likely for next year.